Good morning, good morning. It's Monday morning. Hope we're all well. Um, so I'm going to talk you through the lessons and then if you pause it on the um, relevant slides you can print them off or, oh no, sorry, you could go on the P drive and print them off or you obviously just write them out in your book. But you also would have been sending a link on your email about something called Bob. Now Bob will become important later on because basically, that's my cat jumping through the roof, thank you. Um, Bob will become important because basically I'll send you links to be able to watch it. It's effectively a website that records everything on TV. It'll be really, really useful going forward. So anyway, let's crack on with it. Okay, so the question in the exam is going to be why was slavery abolished? Um, slavery was abolished because of four things. So was it the Christians? Was it financial reasons? Was it the role of individuals like Clarkson and Wilberforce? Or was it because of things going on in the world in France or Haiti and places like that? So it's a bit like, you know, why would you be successful at school? Is it the student, the teachers, the parents and the environment you're in? And it's, you know, the truth is, it's a mixture of all of those things. And it's just a question of, you know, rearranging the structure of your essay and the exam and ideally talking about all of those things. So this is probably the slide you need to print off. So it's on page 118, 120 of the book. And what Roger Anstey argued was that really the work was so important that in 1796, Parliament nearly passed an abolition act because they were so successful. So just bearing in mind, um, you know, it took them almost 20 years. So slavery was abolished in 1807. So it took them almost 20 years for them to abolish it. Um, I'm going to call them the SAS because it's just a bit more easy to understand. So the Society for Effecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade. Um, and I think the reason why this guy, this historian became popular was because it portrays Britain in a more humanitarian and better light, you know, rather than just getting rid of it because it became financially unprofitable. Um, another reason, this is on page 119, is something called the Zong case. Now the Zong case was an infamous case where it was, the Zong was a slave ship um, and basically it got a bit rough, the weather on the crossing, and the captain of the ship decided in order to save the lives of the majority, he would throw aboard uh, overboard, sorry, I should say, 133 slaves on the last stage because they were running out of food. So it wasn't that horrific nature that that's what he did. It was more this, the fact that actually when they came back to London, they put a claim on the insurance and said they wanted the money back for the slaves that had been gone abroad. So this became a kind of a national disgrace. People were absolutely hor horrified that nobody was actually talking about you know, the death of the slaves rather than talking about the financial insurance aspects of it. The other bit there is the West Indian lobby. Now, the West Indian lobby were a rich, powerful group of planters living in the West Indies. And effectively, they had lots of MPs, about 50 MPs, I think it was, in their pocket who they could block, campaign against the SAS, and they were quite influential in Parliament. Um, what the SAS did was they developed quite a, um extensive propaganda campaign. So if you flick over to page 120... As I said in the lesson, they would have that picture at the bottom of a cup. Um, you know, when you're doing the washing up, you could see your tea cup or your coffee cup um, or your sugar bowl had that image there. Um, they also did drawings of the ships. Um, they did petitions. Um, and really, they made it popular amongst people because, you know, lots of people working in factories, etc., could kind of relate to this aspect of slavery. So there's some examples of that, as I was just talking about. So this the slave sh drawing of the brook ship and the the Wedgwood drawing on the on the on the porcelain cups. So overall, you know what do what is Anstey really saying? He's saying basically saying that the uh, they campaigned for over twenty years. They managed to enthuse the working class, get them on their side, and they massively increased public awareness. So let's move on to. The next argument, which is the economic argument. Now, the guy, the historian here, is a bloke called Eric Williams. Now, he did lots of calculations and statistics and basically came up with this classic historical argument that the reason why slavery was abolished because it became uneconomical. So, let remind you, a reminder, reminder, reminder of the triangular trade. So, they sell from the UK with guns and alcohol. They exchanged them for slaves in Africa on the West Coast. They then sailed to the Americas, called the Middle Passage, which they then sold the slaves and then brought the raw, raw materials of sugar, etc., back to the UK. 
So where and how did that um, profitable business fall down? Okay, so you're going to need to print this slide off. So I'm going to run it through point by point, but this is on page 122, 123, and 124. So obviously the slave trade was really important, particularly for places like Liverpool, Glasgow, and Bristol. They estimated that 40% of people's income in Bristol and was based on the slave trade. So it's obviously not just the ships, it's providing the goods for the sailors, provide building the sails, the maintenance of the boats, etc., etc. So all of this stuff was incredibly important for those particular cities, and obviously the MPs in those cities were absolutely adamant that slavery was not going to be abolished. It was also really important for the textile industry. You know, places like Manchester, Lancashire, most or a lot of the textiles they were producing was being sent over to Africa, you know, as the as the trade for slaves. Um, so this basically created another market for the textile industry. And this became even more apparent during the uh, wars with France when the Napoleon, Napoleon's navy blockaded Britain. So obviously a lot of the European markets were closed. So Africa became a really important market for um, the textile industry. So I've kind of summarised all that on that slide there. On the next one, basically Adam Smith. So obviously we know Adam Smith. Adam Smith was the you know, founder of this idea of laissez-faire, and you know his ideas became really popular amongst factory owners, become you know the middle class in Britain generally, and really, um, lots of lots of economists began to say that hold on a minute, we can actually produce these goods cheaper because um, instead of having to house and feed slaves and actually having overseers and disciplining them, it was a lot cheaper just to pay them actually very low wages, um, and actually the other thing was worth bearing in mind, particularly from a financial perspective, is that industrialization factories were offering even higher profits. So say, for example, you are an investor with £100,000, obviously what you want is the highest return, and what became increasingly um, more common was for people to make more money from industrial factories rather than actually slavery itself. So slavery kind of ran dried out of, sort of investment money. Um, a little bit more on that. So particularly banks like Barclays, um, they offered credit as the average return was between 20 and 50%. Um, it's quite expensive to buy and refit ships of the voyages. Um, and obviously, you know, when you're borrowing money, um, you know, you obviously got to weigh in risk. Are you going to lose your job? All that kind of stuff. You know, coronavirus and all that stuff's going on at the moment. Um, so... You know, if 10% of your ships are being not actually making it to the ports because of slave revolts or bad weather, that obviously increase the risk and increase the interest rate that the bank would charge you. So over time, the banks began to look at other investment opportunities that they would look at safer bets. Um, and also, it wasn't just the voyage itself. It was often the crops, you know, were very dependent on the weather. So one year, you could make huge gains, but also huge losses. So often, planters got in kind of a debt cycle, um, where you know they, they became increasingly reliant on banks and so it became increasingly difficult for them to continue. So the economic arguments, um, I mean, and basically, you know, 5% of the UK economy was based on slavery, either through the trade or just through um, connected industries. And the government was increasingly under pressure, so they did actually pass a law called the Dolbin Act in 1788, which limited the number of slaves on the ships, and they had to have a doctor on board, so basically it became more expensive. However, you know, even though there were huge risks, people could still see the opportunity to make huge fortunes. So there's, you know, the, argue, the economic argument, you could argue both sides. So it was becoming more risky, however, people would still invest because you could make a huge amount of money. So just to summarise... Um, the reason why people say economic reasons abolish slavery was because of the increasing risk, slave results, bad weather. So if you lost all your investment, you wouldn't go back and do it again. Um, with increasing risk, it led to less investment, so it was more difficult to raise capital from the banks or you'd have to pay higher interest rates. Adam Smith and his ideas of economic ideas of the free market um, you know, it became cheaper to employ than to maintain slaves. You know, this idea of zero hours that we have today. Planters got increasingly in debt. Um, and, you know, the government, however, you know, if it was going to get rid of slavery, we'd have to pay about 17, 20 billion compensation in today's value. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons of this argument. But if you can do those two slides, that'd be great. Thank you.